All right, guys, how are we doing today? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna take a look at an in-depth uh, look at Bitcoin, and we're gonna do this on some of the higher time frames. So my goal for this video is to show you guys how I look for confluence um, in levels using uh, a multitude of different things. So uh, you're gonna see some Fib extension stuff. You're gonna see some support and resistance stuff, price structure, um, mostly classical charting stuff, maybe get uh, into looking at a couple of indicators, but uh, for these higher time frames, it's basically just gonna be your standard ones like RSI and MACD. Normally those work best on the one hour and above time frames because they are lagging indicators. Um, I have found in my experience that the only thing that doesn't lag is uh, volume itself. So without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and hop right into the video. If this is your first time here, make sure that you smash that like and subscribe button that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Plus, if you turn the little bell for notifications on, um, you won't miss any of my analysis videos or free tutorials that I put out on this channel. So let's head over to the charts. familiar with this price structure by now. This is nothing new for us. Um, this is what's been going on for basically the entire year. Um, so we've got a couple things going on uh, with the most recent price action is we're kind of consolidating under our uh, major all time high resistance up here. Okay, so there's a couple key levels up here. Um, our wick for our all time high previously was at 64,840. Um, and now it's just a little bit higher. So we did put in a slightly higher high. Uh, at 66,950, so almost 67K. Um, and keep in mind, this is the BLX chart, so your mileage may vary based on what exchange that you're trading on. Anyway, um, the fact remains the same, though, that overall we're consolidating under a major level of resistance, which is uh, right near our all-time high. So um, in the next coming couple of days or weeks, what I would be expecting to have happen uh, is we see something like this where we've got this level of resistance here. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll line this up on the other side. Okay, these are at the same levels you can see. So what we would be looking at doing is trying to be flipping this into support here uh, on our daily chart. Okay, so if we can do that, and we can manage to stay above some of these really key important levels here, then we should be okay uh, to continue moving up into price discovery. So uh, what I would like to see happen here, um, if we're just going to keep moving up from here, obviously, is a break of this previous high, uh, possibly a retest and a bounce. Um, however, if we're going to reject here, and we're going to make a lower high, uh, what has to absolutely happen is we cannot be violating uh, this low here at about 52,890, so about 53K. Um, I think that if we see closes below that on the daily chart, um, we would probably end up seeing some kind of a trend reversal here uh, where we're getting lower lows and lower highs, possibly forming a larger channel um, or just actually breaking down. Uh, completely. So uh, we're kind of at, uh, we, we've got a lot of wiggle room in here is I guess what I'm trying to say, um, you know, up in here between about 65,000 uh, and 53,000. Okay, so there's a pretty big range in there. I know that that's a few thousand dollars. But um, overall, um, you know, there is a, also a good chance that we could just consolidate in here for the majority of the rest of the year before really making a move to the top side, uh, you know, and forming something like this where we get a channel, uh, which is actually a bull flag, but we see a throw over for a fake out um, and or a bear trap. So there's a, a couple possibilities here that can happen on the daily chart. Uh, we just kind of have to wait out and see what's happening. But overall, I'm biased long. Um, I am currently in a long position that I've been building around in here on this dip. Uh, and I will be looking to add to that uh, longer term on these higher time frames in terms of my spot position. Uh, if we do start coming down into this 55 level, uh, you know, and be retesting around $50,000. So I will be looking to add there. I'm a big buyer down there. Um, and especially lower, like the low, the lower it goes, the better, right? All right. So this is the daily chart again. However, I just wanted to point something out to you. This is basically um, the levels that I've had drawn for a long time. If you've been here on the channel, um, you're very familiar with these. These are levels that I've had drawn for months and months at a time. You will notice that something has changed. Um, so originally I had this channel drawn differently and I originally had this, I think along with everybody else, uh, this drawn as a descending uh, channel here, lining up from here. And these were all of our touches for the lower uh, extreme of the channel. And then 
descending from here to here. Uh, and this was all like kind of like our midline in here, all of this stuff. I've actually changed it to an ascending channel. Now, why would I do that? Well, the reason why is because we didn't just break through this resistance right away um, and immediately keep making new all time highs and going into uh, true price discovery. Instead, what we've done is uh, we've kind of we made a newer high, but immediately rejected and now we're consolidating under the resistance. So I am a little more biased to say that this is now an ascending channel, considering that we have been making higher highs over here. Um, if you really want to touch all the wicks or whatever, it would look something like this. Um, you know, really, however you want to draw it. Again, these are very circumstantial, uh, really depends how, how you draw these things. But uh, this is really the area that I've been watching up here. This very good confluence with our major levels of resistance, um, as well as uh, a lot of touches and inconsistency, which is quite uh, common around our median line. So I just want to point that out real quickly. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the price action and the structure on the four hour chart and just kind of compare and contrast. Clearly here we're in a level of consolidation. Now it's going to be up to the volume to kind of decide as this progresses uh, if this is an area of reaccumulation or distribution. So if we bring up our indicators here, we can see basically all you have to do is, is be able to tell, okay, do we have more bullish volume or more bearish volume uh, consistently while we're ranging in here and just kind of moving sideways on this higher time frame, this kind of intramonth time frame here? And basically, the answer is that I would say we probably have more bearish volume here. So uh, this was a big area of uh, distribution here. But then once we kind of leveled off and started consolidating here, the volume has been mostly bullish, I would say, uh, since about here. The vol Once the bearish volume started decreasing here on this uh, little sell off that we had, uh, that was pretty much it. And for the most part, it's been uh, reaccumulation through here. So um, on this initial drop, obviously, this was distribution, but now we're moving into a level of reaccumulation where we're starting to see our trend change a little bit. Uh, and we will get into that a little more on uh, the one hour time frame in just a moment. Uh, but I just want to bring your attention to some of the most recent volume uh, that's been going on since uh, near the end of October. OK, so after this drop, it has been mostly uh, bullish volume. We're getting higher lows in our uh, indicators here as well, which is really good. We're starting to make higher highs here in our price action most recently, which is also very good. If we take our indicators off and uh, just really look at the actual price structure itself, um, these levels are actually more significant on the one hour chart, but um, they still hold significance on the four hour. You can actually see that just recently today, on this four hour candle previously that we had, we actually touched almost to the tick this um, green resistance or support box uh, that I've had drawn down here. So uh, currently in our discord for the premium members, we are currently in a long position. I'm actually looking to be adding uh, to that leveraged long position in this support box. So I have no problem adding down here. Uh, there's a very clear invalidation here. Um, and for the overall price structure, there's also very clear uh, invalidation levels here. Okay, very, very clearly uh, drawn invalidation levels. That's kind of why it's important uh, to be checking these higher time frames. Okay, so that when you're starting to build a position, if you're looking to accumulate with the with the smart money during a period of consolidation, um, and you can tell that it's a period of reaccumulation based on volume, uh, you're going to be wanting to look for those intra week and those intra month time frames to see where those major supports are so that you can patiently wait and build your position and set some resting bids so that you can dollar cost average and get the best entry possible uh, for the longer time frames. Um, this is especially true if you're uh, doing swing positions on spot that you're going to have open for a couple months at a time. So combining this with Ichimoku Cloud, this is pretty much what we have here. Currently on our previous four hour candle, we tested our 50 EMA as well as our Tenkinson line. Um, and that's all there's a lot of support down here. OK, you can see all of these lines. So the orange is our 100 um, four hour moving average. And then we have our Kijinson line. Both of these are inside of a green support cloud. And we just tested bullishly or retested bullishly our Tengensen line as well as our 50 EMA and a major support area. OK, so if we take our drawings off and just look at Ichimoku Cloud, this is pretty much what we have here. Um, and this is why I'm looking to be adding in this area. Normally, the Kijinson line, a lot of people use that as a baseline for their strategies. Um, but there's a lot of really good confluence here in this area. Um, and it's not it's not really that big of an area here. 
the total with the bottom of the cloud is uh, less than 3%. So um, that's a pretty, pretty solid area, um, especially if you're an Ichimoku cloud, uh, to be looking to be adding to a long position on retests of these clouds and um, of these, you know, when we start reclaiming a lot of these major supports, okay? Uh, let's come down to a one hour and I'll show you what I meant about um, those support and resistance levels being a little more relevant on the one hour time frame. This chart has probably been the most important chart uh, for me over the last uh, couple weeks here. And it's mostly because of this price structure. Remember I said at the beginning of the video, I really want to take a deeper dive into the price structure. So this is why this area that I've circled here is so important to me. Not only is this a retest, uh, a bullish retest of this triangle, uh, proposed triangle, um, that we broke out of, but it's also a retest of major support uh, in a few different ways. So one of those ways is just with price action. And then of course, the other way is uh, with all of the confluence that we have with Ichimoku Cloud, both on the one and the four hour chart. So if you wanted to take it one step further, uh, we could look at some other things here in terms of uh, retracements. If you take our last low, and project it against our last high, we retrace between the 0.5 and the 618. That's a very typical level um, for the price action to be retracing to in the middle of a move. So there's that. Um, and then we also have the fact that if you measure this overall trend from our lowest low to our highest high, uh, we're using our 382 as support. So there's pretty solid confluence there in two ways with a retracement uh, in terms of mathematical levels of support and resistance. Um, and if this was going to be continuing to the upside, you'd be able to predict that simply by taking your last low, projecting against your most recent swing high, um, and then projecting against uh, the dip that just occurred. So uh, the first level that we really need to be climbing through here and closing above for any kind of continuation signal uh, is a close above our 382, and that's right at about 63,425. And obviously we can see that that lines up pretty well uh, with a major area of resistance up here, okay? So this same area up here uh, that we had first rejected from. So that's gonna be like the first boss that we have to climb through and be able to flip this level first before we can be moving up higher. Um, now, if you notice, I have this red box up here and it isn't because of a FIB level. This box is actually here because I have it lined up with this one, okay? Which is basically our all-time high resistance. Um, at the end of the day, this is kind of the target that I would be uh, looking for and I think there was confluence with this. Yeah, so it's about the 1272. So this would end up being some kind of a harmonic pattern if those levels would be hitting. But uh, in general, again, there's really good confluence there in terms of a target. Um, if you're looking to build a position here at major support, uh, expecting, you know, more upside to be coming up into these highs and retesting uh, either our all time high or that all time high resistance. So that's kind of my plan. And that's what I wanted to really point out to you here on this one hour price structure. I just wanted to go in, give you guys a walkthrough of like how I use and how I look for confluence, uh, the different tools that I use to look for that, um, and how I combine that with just classical charting techniques like price structure, volume, um, and classical charting patterns to kind of give, um, you know, a more well-rounded shape of what I'm looking for in terms of the price structure in order to either start building a position or create targets for a position that I'm already in, okay? All right, guys, that is it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and all of that stuff. You heard me mention the Discord multiple times throughout the video. If you haven't yet, go in the description below and check out the link for that. It is free, and there's a whole bunch of other really good tools down there in the details or the description, I guess, of the video to help you chart better, including uh, liquidation maps, heat maps, and all of that good stuff. I think there's also a link for a free Elliott Wave book in case you guys are Elliott Wave chartists and want uh, a good free ebook on how to learn how to do Elliott Wave theory. With all that said, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and until next time, happy trading. <laughs>